Hello. For those who don't know me, I, my name's Derek Bailey. I've been a wood turner now off and on for over 40 years and taught for eight of them. Uh, for those who've been following me over the last few videos, I've made an eccentric chuck for my little Axminster lathe. I think I can show it you. Somewhere. Uh, wait a minute. For that little Axminster lathe. It's a nice compact chuck for doing eccentric turnings like that, for doing uh, medallions and, and uh, pendants and what have you. <coughs> but there's one major problem with it, with it being a little lathe, that when I unscrew this, you can unscrew it, wait a minute, <coughs> put it in the chuck. Unscrew it like this. And put it in any one of those 12 positions. It's okay on the first two, which is the nearest to centre. But when I put, start putting it on the extreme one. With a little lathe, it's mount, I've screwed it to the bench and the bench is screwed to the wall. But I switch on. I'm not too bad there, but you see the reds are quite low. Now you can hear the sound. I mean, I'm hardly going at any speed vibrating like that unless you've a really secure mounting uh, on the floor etc it's a bit, a bit nerve-wracking trying to turn a pendant with it set at the extreme setting now if I put it in my big lathe same setting as I had on the small Axminster one I can speed it up to one thousand six hundred and thirty. Not a problem. That's great when you're doing intermittent turning, you've got it at that speed, you hardly feel the difference. So obviously it's great for a big lathe like this, there's, very no, there's no vibration, very little. So it's a lot uh, reassuring to know that than using my small lathe, except on the minimal eccentricities. So I've decided that I'm going to try and make another chuck that doesn't cause the vibration. And in the, in the video that follows this introduction, I'm hoping to show you an idea I have for cutting out the vibration and yet provide a chuck that can do pendants, etc. of the like that I've shown in previous videos. Anyway, enough waffling, let's get on. For the base plate I'm using an 18mm thick by 200mm square plywood. I'm just measuring the profile here for an M6 bolt uh, which I'm going to machine uh, a T-slot into the plywood later with a router. It's not advisable to use the T-slot cutter straight off. Uh, it's better to use a straight shank cutter uh, to do the bulk of to remove the bulk of the wood and then use a T slot cutter to finish off later.
Here I've just set the router up to cut a quarter inch slot using the uh, straight cutter and then I will reintroduce the T-slot cutter later on to, make, to create the finished T-slot in the wood. I'm airing on the side of caution here and making three passes to do the final depth of cut. Rather than watching me go through the process of changing the cutters, I've uh, off camera I've machined the final T-slot profile. Here I'm reaping the benefits of making uh, things to the minimum sizes. Uh, I always have the caution in mind that I can expand things later on rather than put one back on. But things don't run freely unfortunately so it's a bit more fettling required. Off camera I made a pendant holding frame and I'm now uh, using it to size up the uh, base plate. Uh, I later on in the video I've decided to modify the, uh, the pendant frame but for the time being I've used it for sizing up the, uh, the, the additions to the base plate As you can see I'm having trouble moving the frame along the base plate so I'm just uh, fettling it with a bit of sandpaper etc until it moves reasonably freely. I'm adding two additional pieces of plywood at the top and the bottom of the base plate to make a, a channel for the uh, pendant frame to move along and stop it twisting etc and I can use it later for marking positions of the frame along the base plate. All the time that I'm making these additions I have to take, bear in mind that I haven't to produce uh, thicknesses that go beyond the top of the pendant or at least the, above the top of the uh, pendant frame. It's now a case of marking the centre of the base plate ready for mounting in the lathe on a screw chuck. Off camera I've, uh, on the, I've used a bandsaw to create a, a, a rough circle and now I'm going to finish it off on the lathe. After marking out the diameter of the lathe chuck, off camera I've machined a recess to the chuck jaw dimensions ready for remounting onto the chuck. I've machined it now to a true circle so here I'm putting in the uh, 
the pendant frame uh, and mounting it into the base plate and then switching the lathe on to see how the vibration is. Even though the base plate is much larger, probably the maximum the lathe can take, the vibration is still bad. Uh, with the uh, with the uh, pendant frame in an eccentric position, so I need to look at ways of balancing the rotation of the uh, of the base plate without or with very little vibration. My idea is to introduce a counterbalance that's equivalent to the uh, pendant frame and can also be adjusted along the, uh, the track and allow for the eccentricities of the main pendant frame. Just to prove it's essential when you do make things are new and never tested before always stand to one side uh, as you can see uh, I didn't tighten the counterbalance up properly and it came flying off a Muppet moment as usual In my previous videos with the uh, eccentric jig or stroke chuck, I was relying on double-sided tape to hold the pendant in place. So I've decided to convert the, uh, the pendant frame, as you can see, into a clamp. So that now we have a pendant clamp and hopefully do away with the annoying double-sided tape procedure. I'm using my base plate as a holder for the new uh, pendant frame and I've taped it to the uh, base plate and we'll, mach we'll machine out a recess for the pendant. I learnt my lesson from the incident earlier where it flew off uh, so I'm making sure with a, an extra portion of uh, tape to hold it in place.
here I'm using the uh, pendant sizing template which I explained in one of my videos earlier to size up the recess in the uh, in the pendant frame Here I'm just using a flat piece of timber to, te to test for the flatness of the recess. Uh, it's the only thing that would fit inside it. At the last minute I decided to make the recess slightly larger than the, uh, than the pendants. Because it's a clamp, I can adjust it to uh, suit different sizes. Uh, not extreme sizes, you know, we're only talking half millimetres, millimetre sizes. But hopefully the clamp will compensate for any difference in, in diameters of the pendants. To allow for any in inaccuracies in the positioning of the frame within the base plate, I'm I've made arrows to make sure that every time I replace the pendant frame in the base plate it's in the right orientation so that I get concentricity. As you can see off camera I drilled two holes in uh, either side of the frame. Uh, this is so that when I saw the frame in half it will act as a clamp when I introduce two six mil uh, five millimeter M5 bolts in. Here I'm measuring the position of the small uh, uh, machine screws that will go through the holes in the frame and slide within the T-slot of the base plate. Now that I've cut the uh, the pendant frame into, into half, into two halves, I can now clamp those two halves together with the uh, M5 bolts that go through. I've made recesses on either side of the bolt heads so that uh, it's to allow for the length of the bolts. Uh, now I can use this as a clamp and put this into the slideways of the base plate. As you can see, even though there's slight variations on the diameter of the uh, pendant blanks, the uh, the clamping uh, the clamping feature of the uh, of the frame seems to compensate for those differences.
Okay, now everything seems to be working fine. Let's do some machining on this Burr Elm pendant blank. Before I do the final finishing it's time to fill up the uh, severe cracks in the elm blank uh, so that it doesn't fall apart when I start doing further machining operations on it. I'm using the standard procedure of uh, very fast setting Araldite, which I'm quite impressed with. It takes about, what, three minutes, for less than five minutes to solidify. And mixing in with some sawdust and filling the gaps in the elm blank. Although I'm eliminating the use of double-sided tape to hold the pendant in the pendant frame, I'm still uh, working on the uh, on the side of caution in, and create a flat surface just in case I have to uh, use the double-sided tape when it's reversed in the frame. I enjoy using Yorkshire Grit Abrasive Paste, it's almost like a polish, uh, it darks the wood somewhat but it, it leaves a very shiny finish and one's tempted to just leave it as it is, but I put sanding sealer on and two coats of malamine just to be sure. Just a quick mention of my uh, scale that I put on the uh, banjo of the tool rest. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, there's a clamp which has a scale on it which I printed off on the computer and stuck it onto the uh, plywood clamp. And this acts as a guide for doing grooves in the, uh, in the uh, pendant itself. I've made a little tool post which accepts uh, a 1 8 of an inch small parting tool. I haven't tried it uh, with any seriousness yet, but I'm just uh, lining it up and, uh, and in future video I'll, I'll bring, it, bring it into use. I've just uh, decided to test it here.
Having set the tool post at its minimum position, i.e. dead centre of the lathe, I'm now seeing if the scale covers the full range to the uh, actual maximum diameter of the base plate. Now I've established the principle of the pendant uh, clamping frame, uh, I'll now just trim it off so that uh, it's flush with the outside diameter of the base plate and there's no protrusion of it when it's at its maximum eccentricity. Now I've made a counterweight for the uh, pendant and the uh, pendant frame within the base plate uh, it's very difficult how I've made it to, to balance it out uh, I've tried putting it in and tried putting it between centres and letting gravity t tell me which uh, <laughs> where to place the uh, the counterbalance on, on, the on the slide on the base plate but I'm having trouble uh, getting some re reliable information, feedback. Off camera I got some uh, kitchen scales and I made the counterbalance and introduced some bolts into it so that these bolts can be taken out dependent on how heavy uh, future pendants are because wood has different densities and it might make a, make a bit of difference so I, I have to be able to adjust the weight of the counterbalance quite easily and hopefully this is achieved by removing bolts as required. The next problem is where to place the counterbalance along the slide so that the whole assembly rotates evenly just like balancing a wheel on a car. Uh, I figured that if I put a scale on on top of the uh, of the base plate and put numbers on and do a test and and it give me approximate position for the counterbalance according to the weight of the uh, new pendants and its and its associated uh, pendant frame. 